Hey, y'all. We're back. Can't Afford Therapy podcast. My name is Antoinette. I'm Savon. And I'm Josh. Here we are. Another episode together forever. <laughs> um, so first, we'd like to always start as we do with our feelings wheel. We want to check in and make sure we all know what we're coming to this to this uh, episode with. Yes. So Savon, you have it. So let us know. I will do the today. honors of kicking us off. Um I'm going to start, because we're so limited in our feelings with this wheel, I may start just telling you how I feel outside of the wheel. That's fine. You don't have to use okay. those words. And I also want to implement... You're not confined to the English language, not my brother? Not at all. I will not let the man hold me <laughs> down. <laughs> God damn it. The system. Oh. No. Um, but I also... <laughs> I'm about to remix some shit again, because I'm going to tell you how I feel physically. And I feel very cozy right now. Cozy. At, at the time of us recording this, it is a beautiful day. fall day, autumn day in New York City. Um, I'm an autumn guy. I, I love this weather. I love how we all look, how we all feel. It feels very toasty in here. So I'm going to go with cozy. That's how I feel. It's a good word. Yeah. Thank you. Made me think about Renaissance. Me too. <clears throat> really? Do you love Renaissance? It was a great concert. I had a good time. Uh, um, How do I feel? I feel... I feel... Good. I feel. I feel like <laughs> oh, all the feelings we have, all these adjectives. I Let feel. Let me see. They don't have any positive ones on there. I know I, that's what I said. That's a real negative yeah. wheel. You know what? I feel um, content. Mm. I really do. I feel content in this moment. I do feel a little. Ang- Any time that it's my topic, I feel anxious. I don't know why, because I want it to be like an interesting listen. So. Me too. That's okay. Is that a pressure that we face when we lead an episode? Yeah. yeah. I, it, it is, right? 100%. Like, oh, I thought it was man, just me. Is this going to be corny? <laughs> I, I definitely thought it was feel just like going to be a snoozer. I be panicking midway through sometimes, <laughs> so I'm like, is this shit interesting right now? <laughs> Did I fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I have those thoughts too. But that's because of, like, my competitiveness. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be, you know. I don't, I don't even think about it. Like, I, I'm more so like, damn, I didn't do good enough. Mm. That should be like. But yes, 100%. Okay. I also think about, like, I think about too, because I'm like, I'm like, man, is this shit hitting? Like, did I pick a bad topic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did I not approach it the right way? Anyway, mm. how do I feel? I feel uh, excited because we have food on the way. Yes. <laughs> Love that. I'm, I'm excited to eat that Love shit. Love that. Uh, I feel grateful because mm. gratitude is the attitude. Mm-hmm. And I'm always feeling grateful despite the fact that, in for some reason, these last few episodes, y'all yeah, have been making me feel bad about that, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel... Um, I feel like accepted mm. by y'all. We've oh. had some really nice conversations, mm-hmm. you know, and that makes me feel happy. <clears throat> I, I like feel that. like I'm getting closer to you guys every time we sit down and do this. And Same. Oh, that's, uh-huh, that's nice. Same. It's a nice offering. If you're not watching us right now, you can't see that I'm holding their hands tender, tenderly. Thank you. And and I don't know what to Our do Father, with Our Father who art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. They they will, I ain't finishing this shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. All right. All right. Here we are. I was about to do I'm about to get in my bag. I know. I seen it. I was like, this is going too far. <laughs> All right. Today, listen, prayers. This is a form of um, coping. We're going to talk about coping, y'all. Um, I thought that this was an interesting topic because I've been considering, I've been just observing how I cope with things. Um, full disclosure, I'm, I think I'm going to talk to my gynecologist about PMDD because I think I might could have it. What's that? Let me read you the clinical. Please do. Yeah. I don't this, have a this, vagina. This escalated fucking. Yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't know we was <laughs> going here. This shit went from coping to <laughs> yeah. gynecologist. Well, you understand. So it's premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Okay. And so it's a health problem that's similar to PMS, but it's more serious where it causes severe irritability. I don't really necessarily have that, but depression, yes. Mm. Anxiety and or anxiety in the week or two before your period starts. Mm. And so I've been taking a tally because I've noticed, like I, I on Around the Way Curls on my other podcast, um, there was a point around, um, I want to say September, mm-hmm. where I was telling folks how I felt and I was like spiraling. I was struggling. And I think I had said something like along the lines of, if my life continues to feel like this, I don't think that I'm, I can keep going. You said that to us. For real? Mm-hmm. Tricky. <laughs> but I said yeah. that and I didn't mean it in a, in a way where I was feeling necessarily suicidal, but That's people- That's the first time where I've heard it, heard you say something in that realm and it felt 
that way. Yeah. And so a bunch of listeners reached out. They DM me like, hey, are you okay? Like, we're concerned. And I was, I, I was like, I couldn't identify why I was so down. Things weren't very different. Like the variables in my life hadn't shifted much. And I was thinking like, did I have a really bad work week? What's, am I losing sleep? Like, what is it? Yeah. And so I started to pay more attention to my body. And I realized, and usually like I play around like, oh, my, on Around the Way Curls, I have a saying where I, y'all gonna hate this, but I'm like, oh, my blood is with me, which is like, you know, all right. Just like everybody, everybody. But, but then <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not <clears throat> struggling then. It's always before. And so a couple listeners reached out and said, you might want to look into PMDD, Antoinette, because we've noticed, because they listen Right before you say that, you are down bad. Like you are sad. It's evident in the episode. Your energy is down and you're having these thoughts where you're you're reflecting on your life and spiraling and, and just not able to see yourself at all. That's mm. that's that's wild, first off, that people pick up on that pattern. That's just full stop on that one. That's interesting. Like the fact well, that women are, I mean, it's no, a lot of women too who are like, not in a bad way, just more so like that, just that as a concept. Like, there are people who are who listen to you and paying attention to you enough that they're like, we've noticed this pattern that oh. before you say this in an episode, the episode right before that, or you're you, struggling, you have this habit of, yeah, of, or you, you, you give off this energy of like you're down, yeah. That's how does that make you feel? That particular thing, like that. I didn't look at it like that. <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, it's I think just it, interesting. I, it, if anything, I'm grateful for it because yeah. that really doesn't, it feels like a community over there. So I'm, I'm able to receive that and be it like, oh, great. we're yeah. for real? Okay. That's well, let me look into that. A lot of people will reach out and give me a lot of advice or um, <laughs> let me know what they observe about me and some stuff I take, some stuff I don't. Yeah. But I'm grateful for all of it, really. Um, but I bring that up because I was um, I was thinking about how I cope with it. And like, you know, how I cope in general. Yeah. And so my co-host and I on that show were two very different people. She was the one that said, you need to listen to your body. Mm. And I'm very like, well, what are the variables in my life that I can control? And what, what's happening? So I don't have to feel this way. I got to get ahead of it. So I was like, what? why is her approach to go inward and observe? And mine is to be like, what are the things that I can change that I'm in control of? I'm in control of everything. So I started to look into this and there's something, there's two ways that, two general ways that folks look at coping and there's an emotion focused coping versus a problem focused coping. Mm. And so there was a quiz on psychology today, today to take and I asked y'all to take it. I'm curious to know what came up, but first I want to just make sure everybody's on the same page about what I'm talking about when I talk about coping. So i uh, a definition from um, simplypsychology.org says that coping is a person's efforts to manage demands that are appraised as taxing or exceeding their resources. In other words, coping is how we try to deal with stress. It is widely it is a widely studied topic in psychology, and there are over four hundred categorized styles of coping. So again, the two that I'm talking about are very general. Um, and these styles are commonly grouped into do, two distinct groups, problem focus versus emotion focus. Okay. So emotion focus coping versus problem focus coping. Emotion, excuse me, problem focus coping is when individuals put forth effort to manage or alter the stressor or situation. So positive self-talk, goal setting, and time management. Emotion focus coping is when individuals regulate their emotional responses due to the said problem, right? Does, does that make it clear? An example of that is like meditation, mm -hmm. relaxation, self-care, journaling, those kinds of things. Got it. So I took this quiz. Wasn't shocked when I saw the result, child. But I'm curious to know. Obviously, I got problem-focused coping where I'm <clears> like, well... What's the goal that I can set for myself so I don't feel like this anymore? Yeah. And Antoinette, it's hilarious. You, yeah, you gotta get it, gotta get it together. And what, why, how you're managing your time? You resting enough? You know, like girl, never observing how you actually feel and like feeling that. Yeah. What did you? What did y'all take it? Yes. Yep. 
in real time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so since I actually have my score so with me, agitating. handy, uh, problems, focus, coping. Uh, I've ranked 77 on my rating or whatever, grade 77. Yeah, I don't know. so the, it's Scale. like a percentage of, because we do both, mm -hmm. right? But when you take the quiz, it tells you how much more you do. And mm -hmm. I was up there with you. I was 80. <laughs> oh, okay. Even so we... I'm, I feel like I'm a little emotional <laughs> lady, but I was. They were like, "No, girl, when you cope, you are <laughs> yeah. straight. Like, how can I fix this? Yeah, how can I solve the problem? Same. What, if, what about you? I wish I, I didn't screenshot my results. You I just know job. what they were. I I didn't know we were going off the number like a metric, but I was problem. I, I skewed more toward problem focus okay. problem coping. focus coping. I, I i thought that of all three of us <coughs> yeah did you really oh uh, yeah i yeah. i didn't think any, any of us were gonna be like emotion focus <laughs> like my girlfriend fran hey fran hey uh if she were to take this she'd probably be completely emotion yeah. focused because she's just like i have to go sit in my hammock and just figure out how i'm feeling about it and like my best mm. friend from a runaway girl shanti she's very like i don't pro i can't do this i don't process like that i have to figure out how i feel and she can sit with it and just observe it and let it be but does she ever revisit it of course yeah but she has to do that first she has to first feel it hmm. and understand it and then like explore what those feelings are so going back to what savon said two episodes earlier she looking at that tiger you know, that mm, shadow yeah. in that cage, she's like, all right, shadow, me and my shadow. Like, she's with mm, it. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, there's a shadow? God, why is the light, you know, shining in that way to show this shadow? I got to fix the light yeah. mm -hmm. instead of dealing with said shadow. So I'll read you what they said about me. Antoinette, your results indicate mm. that you sometimes use, sometimes, you most often use problem-focused strategies in order to cope with stress. Although these methods are gen generally ineffective when dealing with situations you can't change or control, they tend to be rather handy when the stressor you are facing is controllable. Mm -hmm. Thus, in certain cases, it's a good idea for you to take action in order to mo modify or take charge of a stressor in order to better cope with it. So I thought about... Um, my life and I thought oh well, that makes sense I'm a project manager in my day to day mm -hmm. so my job is to root out <laughs> what is the stressor and to snuff it and yeah. to put a system in place to make sure that you know yeah. we don't have this obstacle anymore and that's seeming to be the stop I'm that stop gap in most of my interpersonal relationships as well so it made sense to me but it was interesting when it when I read this and it said this is really only helpful in situations that you can't control, mm. you know, and it's not handy in a situation like, I don't know, this PMDD where it's like, this is not, and I'm not diagnosed. So I'm not trying to diagnose. Where you can control, you mean? What? Like where you can control it? It's, this is, you can't so control being this. a problem yeah. focused yeah. person or coping that coping mechanism is not handy in situations. It's not handy in situations that you cannot Can't, control. Okay, okay, okay. Right? I'm sorry. So, like a PMDD, for example, is something that's happening inside of my yeah. body that I actually can't control. So, the way that I'm coping with it is not helpful. If anything, it's probably stressing me out more instead of just observing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, I might need some of these other methods to actually be able to cope with it, to remind myself like, you know, hey, this isn't really, that's not, hands. this isn't really how you feel about yourself. Yeah. Hey, you're having body dysmorphia because you're bloated and your breasts hurt and this and that. Like, hey, it's okay. Like remind yourself, give yourself grace around this time. Your body's doing something miraculous, you know, these kinds of things. And so I was trying to think about other situations like capitalism. I cannot control capitalism. No. Sadly, I want to be you able cannot. to. But it is something that I'm like. It's one of those things where it's probably easier to conform than to fight against. Or to at least. get yeah, Okay. But or to at <laughs> least, you know, recognize my emotional response to, to it. it. Yes. And be able to like cope and under and just be just just be aware. It. It's not right and be able. To, it's nothing I could do about it. But what I'm doing, yeah, right. It's a lot of this is out of my hand. What's another like? Give me some more examples of things that like 
just as it, there's nothing you can really do oh, about it. Airplane flight. Well, now we back yeah. to these pilots. I'm just saying. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you're in the sky. It's not a goddamn thing. Nothing you can do. It's, you're in a, a, a flying bus. Yeah, you're in a tin can in the sky. What is it? Uh, running on liquid dinosaurs. And you can't yeah. even <laughs> fit through the window if you needed to. No. That is some anxiety for your ass. Yeah, but there's you nothing you can do about it. Really think about it. If you yeah. really, really th- like, True. there's been moments where I got on on a plane and I'm just looking around and I'm like, worst case scenario yeah. is really worst case yeah. scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, you, there's nothing you can do about anything. A thousand percent. Yeah. You just offer yourself in that way, and I hope nobody's listening to this at the airport or on the on plane. plane right that's now. gonna be really fucked. Well, like, press the go. 15 fast forward yeah. button yeah. right here. Um, or maybe you should have surrender, did that man. Ago. Airplanes, like I, I have a fear of flying, mm-hmm. and f- flying has taught me surrender because there's nothing. You, you yeah, can you do. have no choice. You have no choice, especially nothing. when you get that high. Like, and the crazy thing, the way that the ego works, I'm my ego, at least, thinking about it. Like, you feel and you want to believe. Yeah, I could. You know, I can make my way. I could figure something out. I, I can. But you really, in reality, like that's nah. Chances ain't good mm. if something go wrong. Not gonna have a few thousand feet up. I was thinking too about like something a little more like I guess simple in day to day is traffic. Nothing you could do. I can control that motherfucker. I know you think you, you can. know how. Just don't go out <laughs> during rush hour. No, I mean, but how. like I know if, you, you, if you're, you're, in, if you're right, yeah. once you're yeah. in it, oh, you're in I hate it. it. And I find and I can get riled up in it and sh- and keep looking at the time like oh my god I'm gonna be late I'm gonna be late I'm gonna be late yeah and it's like well yes you are. How does that make you feel? How does it? And, and so a deeper thing for me is like, girl, how do you feel when you're not in control? Mm. That's a stressor in and of itself for me. Yeah, I feel that. See, Josh mentioned airplanes. You mentioned traffic. What I first thought of was someone else and somebody's emotions. Mm. Oh, Savon. What you, why you, why you, oh, I'm that's, legit. I know. That's you, so you great. That's you, such a good, that is such that is a, a good, good example. example. You you just can't, like, you hear people fall out of love and one person can still be in love and it's just like, wait, what the fuck? It's a good example. You can't control it. There's nothing you can do. You can that's real. hark in all the memories and all the gifts, shower, whatever. And if that person doesn't feel the way that you feel, then there's nothing you can do about it. Not you showing me my own tiger. Because, baby, the way that in my past, how I thought I was completely in control of that, I'm just going to love you more. And you, There's no way you can deny this. Woo! That's shut a, up. That's tough. That was triggering. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. But <laughs> that was really good. That's, yeah, that's, good I was one. thinking about my stapler don't work. He no, took it to the he's love. Not like you, you, you can't control somebody else's emotions and feelings. That's right. And it doesn't matter how much you want to pour into them, how much you try to, you think you can, you think you can probably respark something. I think that's probably the most tragic. Like when you first getting to know somebody, this is like a double dutch, right? It's like a game. You're trying to feel each other out. You're trying to get to know each other. You're trying to court her, whatever it is. You're trying to see if we're compatible, but. I think the worst type of lack of control is when you actually reach that climax of feeling like I love this person and this person loves me. And then when that kind of evaporates, it's like, wait, hold up. I'm still here. or She's still here. But somebody else, the other party is gone and you can't control it at all. That's fucked up. That's like a perfect example of like being forced to learn that problem yeah. solve solving kind of coping doesn't, doesn't work, work. That, that, <laughs> you know? that's how it, like yeah that's how i know? learned i had to learn the hard like, way that's gonna teach you real quick like better start meditating motherfucker you hope <laughs> yeah or Baby, you end up the you, way i yeah. beat my head against that wall yeah like this works <laughs> but it's a it's a I, I feel like for most for most like adolescents that's when that lesson is learned or, or at least should be learned is when you're like Trying to like what's the age of adolescence? It's, it's like you know, like teenage, like yeah. puppy love oh. years. So, Embarrassing uh, myself, yeah. I didn't learn. For boys, I feel like especially like mm-hmm. when you like like a girl that maybe doesn't like you as much as you like them, and you think that you can woo them into liking you. You know what I mean? And then you learn quickly, like that's not how it works, bro. Get ain't over no, it. Ain't nothing you can move do. on to the next one. You know, I feel like that's like a, a that's a great example, man. Yeah. That's like such a good example of like how learning. That you need to be able to balance two different styles of coping. Mm-hmm. And a lot of men, I feel like, don't learn that. 
you know, unfortunately, and they you know, become toxic. You kind of learn the hard way. <laughs> like that's one of the few ways because the traffic and even the the air travel, it's kind of expected, right? If I leave my house at five p.m. in New York City, I know I'm gonna hit traffic. Like, yeah. there's nothing I can do about it. It's inevitable. Like I, it is what it is, and the same with the airplane. If I'm in the sky, I'm in the sky. This yeah. is just what it is. But I think when you're dealing with other people and other feelings and emotions, and um, you know, you you just can't control anything in that. Like sometimes they don't even understand what they're going through. So how can I convey my message to get you to feel me or yeah. want to love me or take this to another uh, a level in our relationship? when you don't understand certain nuances or certain things about yourself. And here I am trying to pour into you. Like, I can't control how you feel. Like, falling in love has to almost be this crazy, perfect storm of both of us being aligned and where we are and how we feel. And we create this energy where, you know, sometimes if it's just one way, that that will wake your ass up. What does that look like then? So when you finally realize, like, okay, I can't problem solve my way out of this this issue. Oh, what does it look like? What a great segue! <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect us to have this lover boy energy today, but I'm I'm digging it. Okay, I really am. Well, I anticipated that none of us would have would get the emotion focused coping result. Yeah, <clears throat> and so I wrote on this here outline. <laughs> let's explore the, the 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 one that we won't well, we don't we don't yeah. use. Yeah. <laughs> So emotion-focused coping refers to like the use of skills for processing and dealing with feelings that arise due to stressful situations. It utilizes inward-facing strategies, including meditation, journaling, eating, breathing. Te- well, that's not the healthiest one. Breathing <laughs> techniques to re- to reduce distress and regulate your emotions. So I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. is the regulation. It's like, oh, I, like when you feel yourself, you know when you're not regulated, right, mm-hmm. emotionally. And so how do you, it doesn't necessarily take away the pain or take away or, or change the situation, obviously, because that's the problem focus, but to regulate your feelings around it and to be able to like maintain your sanity, yeah, you know, and your um, your understanding of what's going on yeah. is is like invaluable, right? Yeah, you don't skew the perspective based on a need or a want, like an unrealistic idea, right? Because that's what problem solving sometimes does is that you start you start morphing a problem into something that you think is solvable. So you're like, no, 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 if I just do this or if I just do that, it'll be better. Mm-hmm. Not recognizing that you're you're rationalizing. It's no longer problem solving. You're rationalizing something in order to make a puzzle piece that doesn't fit fit. <laughs> While like what it sounds like, like emotional, like coping emotionally is, you know, for certain situations can be healthier. Like it can be, let me just observe the situation, accept it and surrender to it. Yeah. You know. Can I, can I ask y'all a serious question? Like Mm. when it comes to emotional focused coping, I'm sure we've done it at some point and if we haven't, that's fine. But like, what are the ways outside of what I just said? You know, like how many times have you really sat down and been like, oh, I, I need to take deep breaths and like regulate my system, like my body, because the dis-ease that we're feeling is actually within our bodies. And so I know that we sit here and talk about, you know, or I, I'll talk, speak for myself, you know, like, oh, you know, take a deep breath. Like this is all stuff that I offer other people. Do I ever do that? Like I'll be, I'll speak for myself. I can't tell you the last time I just sat there and said, let me do breath work. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm I'm tired. I'm anxious. I feel stress. Let me sit down and try to regulate my system. Or um, I watched my godson. What a brilliant being he is. He's 13 years old. He was 12 at the time. And his brother was having a really, he was just having a fit, his mm-hmm. little baby brother. And my godson picked that little boy up and put him on Hey, his brother's probably like six. Picked mm-hmm. him up, put him on the kitchen counter and said, look at me. And he put his hand on his brother's chest and he put his brother's hand on his chest. And he said, we're going to take deep breaths so you can calm down because you can't hear anybody right now. OK. And his brother's crying, crying. He's like, look at me. Keep your eyes on me. It's only me and you in the room. And I watched him do this and was like, 
That's beautiful. It, it, but it was so advanced. It was like, what? At 12 is insane. At 12. <laughs> At 12 and I, and I was years asking, old. I, after he did it, I watched him and I said, where did you learn that? They teach that? that in school now. And he said his school was teaching him that. Yeah. That's brilliant. And I was like, yo. Yeah. And it made me reflect on myself of, Antoinette, you don't do that for yourself. Even when you're in the bathtub, I used to take these baths and I, I, well, I take a bath every night. And so that's like my time. But now it has turned into my time to research for a topic. So I'm watching CNN Mm -hmm. for Around the Way Curls for Politics or I'm watching somebody like a psychologist talk about this in the tub. And I'm like, yo, you don't regulate your system anymore yeah ground yourself and and i'll be honest the only time that i really do that is probably in hot yoga but i'm not there to regulate my system if i'm being mm-hmm. honest yeah i'm there to try to look different mm-hmm. i'm there for a workout yeah and then there's this anxiety of like your if i'm not performing well which that's not even the practice of yoga, right? The opposite. It's the exact <laughs> yeah. opposite. So I'm observing this of myself of like everything is based in result. Everything is result based. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, you just got to be, you're supposed to be and observe yourself in this class. And so I've really been trying to do that and honor my body. And in that class, the last one that I did, I was like, okay, I had the, one of the best practices because I really connected my breath to the movement. Mm. I did not move until I did not move my body unless I was exhaling or inhaling intentionally. So every movement was like, and I was moving through space in a way where I felt so grounded and so calm and so in my body that like, I don't, I don't think I feel that way in any other time besides if i'm like self-pleasuring and then i'm like i'm grounded i'm in my body i'm connected i'm regulating something like very specifically but i have to be connected to my breath yeah and so i was thinking to myself what would happen if i paid that much attention to myself in everyday life (laughs) oh here he goes no (laughs) here you go just because i said Uh, something about self-pleasure no he got confused i didn't it actually (laughs) helped me get to where you, you, the question that you asked, because I thought about it, and the few times that I've had breath control or had to practice some type of regulation with breathing, um, the first thing that came to mind was anger. When I'm mm. upset, when I'm angry, I'll sit there and I'll do my best, and sometimes that shit just don't work. I am not going to breathe at all, and sometimes when I can get through to me, I'm like, all right, let me take these deep breaths. Oh, wow, you do that. That's good. I, I have, but I don't do it normally. And I, honestly, I've probably failed at it more times than I've done it. But that was the only time and the first time that I thought about it when you asked the question. I knew you were going to you know, ask us. Yeah, of course. And, so yeah, so <laughs> I was already ahead of you. But when you said self-pleasuring, it came, it dawned on me that um, I'm a breather while having sex because it helps me regulate my body and control like your, my release. Your release, Yeah. yeah. And I learned that later. I didn't know that when I was younger. Probably would have had longer sessions then. But now I'm like, I can extend this moment for myself and for my partner through breathing. So breathing has helped me, you know, last a little bit longer. And regulate. And regulate. And deep breaths and conscious breaths and out through the nose and through the mouth, all that stuff. Like that's the only time that I really practice anything with my breath in that way. So then what's the disconnect between us? Why, what is the disconnect between us understanding how valuable this regulation is for our everyday life? Because I get something out of that. We're going to get it right. If I'm breathing good, you're going to feel good. I'm going to feel good. But wouldn't, wouldn't you get something out of, of that in a, in a high stress situation on the airplane? In Big the time. traffic, yeah, you know, like in the meeting where somebody's pushing your fucking buttons, and you're I, like, "I do it often." I oh, yeah, I figured you did. I you're do more it intentional all the time. in that way. I do it all the time, and he's like, "I'm doing it right now with no you one, idiots." No one has told me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Every time I don't walk into the motherfucker, I practice these. Every breaths. time y'all text me on that don't long ass group do chat, that. talk about clips. No, you know who? I start who, breathing. Where I really learned. <laughs> Making sure I practice that way, both because of how it tests my patience, but also to be a good role model is my child, mm. a two-year-old. Mm. And and we, you know, we always tell them like, take a big, deep belly breath, 
Mm. And when he's really upset, I'll say, big belly breath, big belly breath. And he'll go. <sighs> and then I'm like, feel better? He's like, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. like the big, like that big belly breath is just put your hands. So when I'm like, let's say if me and my partner are, are arguing, me and my fiance are arguing, or I'm, I'm in a, I'm really frustrated with someone for work or I'll be like, I'll be like, <sighs> okay. And then I'll go ahead and I'll explain whatever it is I need to explain. Because if I didn't take that breath beforehand, I know I'm going to sound a little more angry. I'm going to have a little bit more of an edge on my words, but that breath is enough to be like, we're all people. Mm. We're all human. We all have lives. This person was once a baby. Mm. I was once a baby. There's someone. And it, all in that breath is that, right? All in that one breath is I, like, if, even if, let's say if there's a situation where I'm impatient with you guys or impatient with someone else, I, I that breath allows me not only to regulate myself emotionally, but to take perspective and to take stock. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times what I come back to is like, we were all once little babies. We were all little babies. Yeah. And we're all trying to figure this shit out. And then I'm so much more patient because I'm like, we're babies. <laughs> you know, like we're just babies, you know? And it makes it easier because it's it's hard to be upset at someone when you look across from them and you yeah. think of you think about them with their mom or their the father. Form, and someone's almost. holding them. And you're like, how can I be like this impatient with you? You know, like and and hopefully you give me the same grace. Right. So I, I do do that. I do I do take a deep breath. I try to do it as often as possible. My son tests my fucking patience. You know, he's throwing a tantrum or something, and I can't get him to, re you know, to to regulate. Then I'm like, I, then I gotta regulate. One of us gotta be all right because then we're both gonna be throwing a tantrum right now. So like, when he's doing that, I'll just, you're a baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally, you're a baby. Yeah, you're literally a baby. You know, and you're doing baby things, and mm -hmm. this is what babies do. You know, so because they can't self-regulate yet. Yeah, and they haven't learned how to do it in a, in a real way. And and then another thing is responsibility. It teaches me he will never learn if I don't show him. Yeah. How can he learn mm. to regulate his emotions if I'm not giving him something to model? I think that's so key. Two things that I want to touch on with what you said. I think that last point is so key. Because I started to recognize that I did not have these examples growing up. I did not grow up with parents who knew how to self-regulate yeah. at all. My dad started to explore meditation and things um, during his divorce. And that was like to fight depression. And like he was down bad after that. Um, so I watched him like he would come home and he would shut his door and tell us like, I need it quiet for the next 30 minutes because he was meditating and like getting back into himself um, but growing up, I no nothing was regulated. It was all like, if I can't control it, I'm gonna lash out. And yeah. I I saw such anger and resentment and fear come out um, whenever they felt out of control. And so I think that is such a clear indication as to why I want to be in control so much. Yeah. Even when it comes to my emotions, I want to control stuff so much that I want to control even my responses to things. Yeah. Instead of just feeling them sometimes. So it's like, girl, your your self regulation is actually like you're stifling yourself because you won't even give yourself the opportunity to feel how you feel. Yeah. And then be able to like bring it back in. You're just <clears throat> you you don't feel it. You'll just you'll cut it off and say, I don't ever want to get there, so I'm not going to. Which is such an interesting thing, which leads me to the, the last intimate moment I had with a man. I was, we were like spooning and he had his arm around me, like around my stomach. And after like maybe three, four minutes, he said to me, you need to take a deep breath. And I was like, what? And he said, your stomach is not moving. Stop holding your stomach in. And I was like, oh, this motherfucker is paying attention. But it was hmm. also such an indicator of, oh my God, so many women I know don't, but also we don't take these deep belly breaths because we're cognizant of how we're, look, we look. I yep. need to fit a certain, like we got, we in the gym in, 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 um, what are those? Waist trainers. Bitch, you can't breathe. Since you <laughs> actually just, can't breathe. Just stuck. Right. And so I'm like, can't I expand. am so cognizant and so hyper aware of, you know, how I'm supposed to look according to society that I'm not even breathing deeply 
in a situation where like that should be the deepest belly breath you're taking. Yeah. And I started to think about how that is connect that could possibly be connected to my lack of orgasming with a partner. Where I'm like, sis, you're not you breathing. Yeah. You're not fully letting go. And you're able to do it with yourself mm-hmm. very easily. So it's not just them. It's also a, like you're not you're not fully present yeah. yet. And you're not regulating things. Like you're regulating things. You're controlling things and like stifling the the actual work and the flow of the regulation. Does that make sense? I, I absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I I once have had a conversation like this before where I had it explained to me and it, man, it, it was explained so well that basically when you are judging yourself in the act of sex mm-hmm. or in any situation where your body is receiving or giving pleasure and you're judging yourself and you're tense, you're not having an orgasm you're squeezing it out right mm. like you're like there's a difference between like free mm. body Full loose body, breathing head, embracing yeah. it head to toe orgasm or like mm, yeah right like there's a there's a difference and <laughs> I, i'm being animated crazy. i'm being until animated audio, no just it from did, the audio until you laugh until you laugh i was like oh, that's what sound like somebody wild. driving right no, now it's real is is it, is real nah, because you're making you such a good point yeah. the orga- you're, yeah. you're 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 holding your breath you're and you're just like it. trying to make it happen yeah. instead of just letting it happen to you those and, are the best ones and then that that's that's the difference between like being able to control your breath being able to embrace yourself being able to not judge yourself being able to feel safe you know and as much as that's on you it's also on the person that creates the environment and it's it's also on like the way you were raised and like women can feel that too like i i the many of the partners that i've had i've told them like open your mouth like why are you yeah. why I don't you you being quiet right now make open your mouth I, you like breathe the same way that that gentleman did with me but we during just sex? fucking laying there oh during sex I'm like you need to open your mouth okay mm. like open your yeah, yeah. seriously no, because that, how do they respond to that because that's crazy they don't they don't under I mean some of them are like what and I'm like I need like I want to hear you yeah. like take a breath you know those memes where it's like yo y'all, y'all be quiet when you have sex with your girl me i'd be like <laughs> yo, <"Hope> cool. a- <laughs> <laughs> i love them first of all right away girls post that shit all the time like come on open your mouth but i love but really shit. it's just like i want you to f- have be a free yeah, yeah. Be yeah. primal but not yeah. just be free but feel this yeah. fully in your body yeah going back to like you know uh self-pleasure as you put it one thing that I learned and I practice going back to forcing it because at some point during the pandemic, I was living by myself. I was in, the, in, in an apartment and I had a, a lot of time to just beat off. I was <laughs> masturbating at a high rate, oh. like eight times a day in between. I I was going at it. Like I really had wow. to like reevaluate myself. I know that one, it was just... <laughs> it, was, it was shooting dust. That's, that's like, just, just hope I, and air. But I was in, in a part of me, like I had to really sit with myself, like, bro, you, first off, you're doing a lot. You don't have to live like this. This is an addiction like, now. This is, it's, it's, it could have gotten there, honestly. Yeah. I'm like, wait, let me, let me cool it. Um, but going back to your point of just breath control and that, like the whole release thing. So what I started practicing doing is uh, I would utilize my offhand opposed to using my right. Because the right, I felt like I was straining my shit. Like, you know how they say choke the chicken? Oh. Like, I feel like I was really forcing it grip, out just to grip, get. Yeah. But then I wasn't really used to my left hand. And it just came out a little bit. Flow, like, the flow was a little easier. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. That's yeah. a thing. Like, that's actually, like, like men get a, a a medical condition when they grip their, their penis too hard when they masturbate. I, I wasn't going that hard. Oh, no. but I I'm just saying, it's a, no, but it's a thing. And it doesn't, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen in one thing. It happens over time. Yeah. Because you're just slowly tightening and tightening because you become desensitized because you keep gripping it too. <laughs> I, this is wild. No. I know this is a wild no. conversation, but it's a thing that happens. I know somebody that yeah. happened to, that's why I'm laughing. Yeah, no, like, it's, that it's nuts. Somebody in real life. Way to have some empathy for them. Um, okay. So that's breathing. I like how we, we fully embraced breathing, yeah. especially when we brought up self-pleasure. Good job by us. You know it. What about, um, journaling? I never did that. 
You know, I I didn't I didn't think that I have <laughs> journal. I'm lying. Or have At you one really point journaled? in my life, I haven't in years. But um, how did when you I was feel younger, when you journal? I felt better. Like writing is my first love. I always say that I'm a writer. So that's how I even got into the space of media podcasting. I started as a writer. I was a journalist, freelance write? journalist, and but I would do um a lot of my own personal entries for myself so you would document would it be like like you document yes but Mm -hmm. were you documenting how you felt were you documenting your day um sometimes i would write to people Mm -hmm. sometimes i would just write how i felt um maybe to a person to a friend maybe that i no longer talk to um I, i wrote to my dad one time when he was locked up i never sent him the letter but i wrote how i felt as if i was going to send him the letter or um there was this one time where i was with somebody and they had a medical scare and I was like, I may not ever see this person and I would write, but I would keep it for me. So I have journal. I just haven't done it in years, but at some point in my life I did. And what did it do for you? What did it make? Like <clears throat> it was therapeutic. It, it was definitely therapeutic. Um, it also allowed me to be in touch with my emotions a lot sooner than a lot of my friends and a lot of my counterparts because I was literally putting how I felt on paper. Like, I wasn't typing these things. It wasn't on my phone in my notes. I was, I legit had a marble notebook mm-hmm. and I would write yeah, in it and I would leave it there for months sometimes. It would get dusty and then sometimes I'll pull it out. And I'm like, holy shit, I remember when I felt like this or I can't believe that I felt this deeply about someone at some point or I felt this way about myself. Like, so at some point I did have a, a journal. And again, it was a, a while ago. I haven't done that probably 10 years, 10 plus years, yeah. but it was something I practiced. Wow. I, I, journaling, the concept of journaling for me, I'd be like, boo. But I, I realized that I used to have like a thought book mm. and like these journal prompts don't really get me going for some reason. And maybe there's a resistance there. I don't know why. And it yeah. shocks me that there is, but I used to have these thought books in like high school. Mm. Um, and a little bit of college, and that when I find them, they're magnificent. It's like all of this, it was like in my hotep days though. So I was like full of knowledge and like, you know, power to the people, but mm-hmm. also, you know, it would be quotes that spoke to me. It wouldn't even necessarily be my own writing because I don't think I'm that great of a writer, but I know good writing when I see it. Yeah. And so I'm one of these people, like when I read books, I got to underline stuff, I got to mark it all up. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so instead of doing that, I would take it and put it in these thought books yeah and so when you go back it's like this this like um well, i like that beautiful I like well wealth of information and mm-hmm. like it's it's really cool and there would be pictures that i had pasted in there or oh wow or like letters that other people had written me like letter this was when my, my parents and i were having a really hard time and letters from them that i had stapled in there it was like documenting yeah my journey and it, and i do miss that and I went to go do it again, and there was like resistance from me, yeah, and a disconnect. And I and I thought to myself, do I feel goofy doing this? Do I feel like this is a waste of time? Why do I feel this way? And I still don't know. But I just resist it wholeheartedly, even though maybe there's something. I'm, maybe that's where I'm afraid of whatever that shadow work is mm-hmm. that I'm that, that it's going to reveal to me. Yeah, something that's uh, helped me. I'm sorry to cut you no, off, Josh, ahead. but. In my writing, something that I would also do is I would create fictional characters. I would write That's cool. from a perspective of a part of who I am today. Really? Yeah. I was extremely creative in my writing. Like I was a reader and I was a writer. I didn't do numbers. I didn't care for science as much. I was a reader and I was a writer. So I used to always believe that I would write a children's book as, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point in my life. Children's books, you need fictional characters. And so sometimes I would just get lost in the fictional character that I was creating and it would just be how I was feeling or I was writing from a perspective of a friend or how I think my friend would be like, uh, my imagination was just kind of wild and I would really put it onto paper. And I was blessed and gifted enough where I write really fast. Like chat GPT, I was chat GPT in college before a thought came, the summary, uh, synopsis, whatever you need, boom, I could get it done like this. So... I, 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 writing was a tool that I used for sure. Mm. You know, I, I think there's a common thing between all of us is that I did the same thing in high school. Really? Like I had marble notebooks uh, and my, the way I would write would be like, I would be narrating my feelings. So a lot of the time it would be like, like 
you would think I'm like a spoken word poet. Mm-hmm. And I think wow. the reason why is because the way that I would write the, about my feelings is that it would be in almost in the form of poetry, but it was really just me romanticizing my angst. So like I would write mm-hmm. things where I'm like, you know, today I'm feeling like I'm deep in the recesses of my mind. Losing, like that's how I would write. And it like, I, I look back, I don't have that stuff as much as I did. But right now I would go back and read some of that stuff. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. like an angsty teenager. You know what I mean? But it was so necessary it, then and w- It was. And I still do it every once in a while. And I'm, I'm more coherent now. I think when I was a teenager, a lot of my feelings were what 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 I was at the time, just chaos. Mm-hmm. Now, when I sit down and write, it's usually for a specific reason, like me and my my partner are having a hard time. So I'll just write down to observe what I'm feeling, and I'll be like, this is what I'm feeling. And then when I want to have a conversation about it, I get to look back at that and be like, what was it that was bothering me so bad about this interaction? Mm-hmm. And um, I'll look back and I'll be like, that's what it was. I'm feeling insecure because of this thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back to it. Now, journaling, like a daily journaling thing, I, I remember I tried to get into that. My problem with that was, is that I found myself looking for things to be more interesting on paper. Oh. So I would write it. And because again, I, I do tend to romanticize things. Like I would think like, like I, I would almost feel compelled to embellish. And mm-hmm. then that's when I was like, this is not what I want to do then. Like if my day was boring, I don't like, then I'm just going to write today was boring. And then I'm like, well, this is a waste of time. Yeah. So I would only feel compelled to write when something really like a milestone <laughs> happened or something that really moved the meter, like really kind of made me feel. If, uh, yeah. if you ever were to go back to journaling and you had like a boring day, right? Yeah. What I would offer is <clears throat> you could say today was boring because... Yeah. And then that it's because good can give you just a streamline of why today was boring. Yeah. No, I, you know, and you don't even idea. have to embellish on is- why it was boring, but now you can go back and reflect like, oh, it was boring because I didn't do this or, you know, my son was crying, whatever it was, yeah. that because will just change the entire, you know, page. It's like improv. Yeah. It's great. like you just have something that sends you on the That's journey it. of the thing. Yeah. I, I think I think a lot of also why I don't like journaling as much as I did as a kid is because like I have adult ADHD now. Mm. So if it's not something that truly is getting me like engaged, I'm just not interested. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not interested in this. Like the reason why I feel compelled to write sometimes is because I truly feel overflow. Mm. It's overflow. Uh, like I, I, there's a lot happening in my head. I need to spill this somewhere. And it's not writing that does it anymore for me. It's usually the gym. Like I'll go work out or I'll like, uh, 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 like taking a big deep breath or like the biggest thing for me is having conversation, talking. Mm. I really like to talk. That'll regulate me like, or listening to someone talk. Like those two things have like been huge for me. They've taken up a lot of what used to be like reading. Reading mm. used to be like my number one way to like regulate. I would just read a good fucking book and get lost in someone else's life or watch a really good movie. But now it's like the gym. I go work out mm-hmm. and I just like hit me- like pads for like 45 minutes to an so hour. That's a good, th- so that's a good segue. But I, before we get into that, I do want to offer as well, like a lot of people will say do morning pages. Yeah. I've never done them. I've resisted them as well. <laughs> just resistant. But ba- do you know morning pages? No, or for I'm everybody who does, it, it's like a, a lot of people got familiar with it from the book, The Artist's Way. But it's basically, um, it's basically a stream of consciousness. You get up, you don't have a prompt, you don't have anything, and you're just writing. Whatever comes to mind, your hand's just going. Mm-hmm. And you start every day like that, and you just write what comes to your head. Um, and a lot of people are like, I don't know how to do that. And it's like, that's because you're resisting like your stream of consciousness yeah, and re- just resisting, just putting pen to paper and just writing because you're judging mm-hmm. it. You want it to sound like something. You want there to be this arc. That's probably why I resist it because I'm not in control of it. Hey, you just figured it out. <laughs> um, but um, but it's just all the noise, noisy thoughts. You're just getting out or not noise, just mm-hmm. mundane thoughts. But you start your day with that and you're starting your day with this self-awareness. So that that's another thing. But I, I wanted to segue into like there's nine that uh, this source, what source was this? This is choosingtherapy.com, pointed out for um, for emotion-focused coping strategies. Mm-hmm. Of course, one was journaling. We talked about that. Going for a walk, you, you I, no, you didn't. You talk, said talk, talk to people. But many people find going for a walk to be like a great way to regulate. Another thing, 
I know I do that, but I might resist that sometimes as well. Talking to a friend. Yeah. Um, depends on the quality of the friend. That's why the quiz kind of, because I do both things. Like I, I, do, I feel like I you were both. probably somewhere in the spectrum. That's, That's why, why I was curious I to know where number. that percentage Sorry, was for yes. you. But I, I thought that you would, be just based off the work you do, still skew towards problem this problem solved. solving. Yeah. Listening to music, because music has such a has such an ability to influence your mood, right? Like I just saw Black Coffee at Madison Square Garden dating this episode, but it was amazing. Like it felt spiritual. And part of it is like he has strings and like orchestral things oh, that man. he's doing. So you're just like, and then these drums and there's something vibrationally with like the frequency that changes like the makeup within you. And it, it's just, music is an amazing tool. And what I have to resist is putting on sad ass music when I'm sad. Me too. Maybe, I, I do it. the same thing. I will be like, oh, I'm sad. It helps me. Kind of blue. Let's go. I love it. As a teenager, <laughs> it was terrible because what would happen is I would I, I didn't know how to pull myself out of it. So if I was sad and I put on sad music, I'd start to drown. Yes. But as an adult now, I put on sad music and I'm like, I'm not you're alone. Lovely. You're allowed to feel it. We're good. Let's enjoy. I'm going to have a whiskey. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm going to be, I'm going to let myself be a little sad right now. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. There's also, of course, meditation, which I would love to do an episode on. I am not, I I can't do an episode on it. I'd love to be a part of that and learn yeah. because I struggle with, I fall asleep. I, I don't know how to do it. I'd be like, oh. and I want to really learn how to do it because I, again, feel like that's very much connected to pleasure, to like tantric, like all kinds of stuff that I'm very curious about, but like I can't, my mind don't stop. Mm-hmm. I feel that, and then when it does, it goes to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I used to meditate. I used to try to meditate daily, like in the mornings. We need somebody. We, need, if yeah. you, listeners, if y'all know somebody who could really help us with that, that would be such a valuable tool. Um, drawing or other art, guided imagery, which I was like, what the fuck is guided imagery? Um, but like, basically, I looked it up online, and and. There are some videos like that you can watch that helps like you kind of just follow the sequence of images and it does help soothe you and calm you. It's kind of like the way I, I consider like the AS, ASMR. Yeah, it's ASMR. Kind of yeah. That, and that shit I works. For, shit. I love I when I feel when you can, I feel my whole body tingle when they're like <laughs> touching the microphone and stuff. I'm like, ooh. Um, movement. I, I, again, yoga, dance, all of those things, like moving your body. Hot yoga will mm-hmm. do. You talk about, it is imp- hot, hot yoga. Hot yoga has saved my life so many times. <laughs> Even when I was in there judging myself. So when I'm actually going to follow through with my breath. Yeah. Imagine, that's going to really. You have, and life. you have no choice. But like hot yoga and I do, I do Muay Thai. So like boxing. So mm-hmm. any martial art or like a, a really hard yoga class, you leave there and you're like, I am not mad at anybody. <laughs> everyone is my friend <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and it's just because you're so exhausted and you're so like aware of your being when you like a hot yoga class you got to be aware of everything you feel a tendons in your ass when you're lifting your leg up like you feel everything when you're doing that <laughs> it's shit. it's incredible it's not and it's like an ultimate like submission because you're not leaving the room you no. could leave the room but why just lay on the you bed. don't want to be no bitch oh god when i'm in hot yoga i'll be like i'll be like i ain't leaving no way. <laughs> I've seen people do it. And even then, I'm like, respect your practice. Um, and then they have, you know, obviously deep breathing. Um, so, I don't I, That's what we should do. We should go do hot yoga together. I have We've been, been saying that. We said that a I'd be down to do it. Eight. Like, I, I, I tried to say, let's do it's it last planning. time. It's just planning. That's it. I you say the next it. Sunday that we come in to record, that I just date today, we do hot <laughs> yoga after. Okay. We'll talk about that. I love that idea. Hot I yoga. love it. I love it. We'll just I'll do hot make yoga. the time for it. So listen, for the deep breathing real fast, I want to give this technique because there are many different types of breath practices. Wim Hof. And you are weak. So go ahead. No, what is, I ain't talking what about is that called? What did you Wim just, Hof? Wim Hof that? is a person. What is it? That's my man from back in the day. You ain't heard? <laughs> Wim Hof, <laughs> Wim Hof is the guy that Savon's like Savon's reaching his peak. He's like the pioneer on 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 breathing uh, exercises really? and like breath techniques. Like he's able to like stay in like freezing water for like hours See, just breathing that properly. Level. I thought that yeah. was David Blaine. 
No, David Blaine's right. the magician guy. But All yes, right. he does. He he follows the practice of like Wim Hof and um that surfer. I forgot his name. That also does Christian Slater. No, Christian Slater is hilarious. All right, Devon so reached his peak. Oh, everybody. And Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater does it as well. See? But there's another guy. I said Christian. Name. But Wim Hof. <laughs> like if Christian anybody wants Christian to learn Slater about Slater is crazy. Nah, that's, <laughs> that's saved by the bell. You say that right? is nah, crazy. <laughs> Kelly Slater. That's You're what I meant. My fault, man. Okay. Well. Just look up the different types of breathing. I'm not getting into that right now because they didn't distract me. But look up Wim Hof. Anybody listening Spell is it. genuinely W Y M H O F F. I think. Okay. But if you guys are genuinely interested in like like breath exercises, breathing techniques, and like really changing your biology mm -hmm. via breathing exercises, Wim Hof is like the guy for that. I watched a bunch of his videos before. It's it's not for me, but it's. Like some people really are good at that shit. I am not. I get anxiety with breath exercises. So really? I start to get breath awareness. I'm like, am I breathing good? Did I breathe long yeah. enough? Am I dying? <laughs> I'm like, I can't do that shit. I'm, it's bad. I'm yeah, I got bad. sinus issues. So I start thinking about, damn, oxygen is only coming through the left nostril. Now I got to switch it to the right. Like that shit is just all You bad. probably got a deviated septum. Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So breathing can be a little bit tricky i will ask you a did question. you just hear that breathing, breathing can, can be a little bit it can tricky. it, it, can. Legit, it can be tricky sounds if like you a like problem. really think about it it is i got asthma i'm asthmatic like, oh no baby yeah i got all that 